So I have in my hand a, a bottle of water and it's just a, an average bottle of water. There's nothing particularly different or unique about this bottle of water. Uh, but it is a bottle and it does contain water and I've just removed the cap. So here's my question. Why is there water on the floor? Why is there water on the floor? Any guesses? Because there was a shaking? All right, thank you for playing. Wrong. We're gonna make this fun, aren't we? Why is there water on the floor? I took the cap off and I allowed the water to go on the floor. Wonderful answer. Wrong. Thank you for playing. Isn't this much fun? I shook a full bottle of water. And Lou, that's a great answer, but again, it's wrong. <laughs> we might think of a lot of reasons why there might be water on the floor. We could think that maybe there's water on the floor because of gravity. And as already has been said, because I took the cap off or because there's a shaking. But here's what we know that is universally true. The reason why there's now water on the floor is because there was water in the bottle. And I want you to reflect on that for just a moment as a metaphor, as an example of what we're going to be talking about today in terms of stress, body arousal, compassion fatigue. And what I'd like to suggest to all of us is that the shaking is not abnormal. It is the normal part of life and the work experience. The shaking is normal. And the reason why there is water spilling out onto the floor from the bottle has less to do with the shaking and it has much more to do with there's water in the bottle. Now, if we compare this, a bottle that's now only nearly full, as a moment ago it was completely full of water, if we compare that to this bottle where the water level is not at filled but much lower, pointing out that the water level is here. And when this bottle of water experiences the very same shaking, there's little to no water that spills out. So in this demonstration today, we're creating an, an awareness and a context that the water level is kind of representative of the level of stress, and in some situation, toxic stress, or compassion fatigue, either in the workplace or even in our own personal life. And our goal today and the goal of, that's a part of our mission for the work that we do and for the people for whom we serve is not about getting the shaking to stop because that's not something that's within our reach. So overcoming compassion fatigue with professional resiliency is not about stopping the triggers, stopping the shaking, or somehow magically changing our work environment to be ideal. But in fact, we're overcoming compassion fatigue with our own personal, professional resiliency, which in fact lowers our stress levels, lowers our toxicity, so that we have a lower threshold and an optimum range for tolerating changes in the environment.